Hi everyone, welcome to My Table 3. My name is Carrie, and I'm glad you stopped by today to watch this video. Um, if you've stopped by, I'm assuming you are here for the dehydrating collaboration. If you're not and you just happen to stop by, then welcome. Today we are talking about dehydrating foods, what we love and what we don't. <clears throat> now, I will go ahead and preference up ahead. There are many wonderful channels. In this collaboration, the collaboration is hosted by Diane over at the Canny Nana here on YouTube. So I will, as always, have her channel linked below and hopefully the playlist as well. So you can go through and take a look at all these other uh, wonderful YouTube channels that are going to talk about dehydrating. I am sure there are a wide range of us that have are either on the newer end to dehydrating or are experts like Diane at the Candy Nana and some of the others that are joining in. I myself have only been dehydrating foods for a couple years. I've been canning um, longer than I have. Well, let me take that back. So I've been dehydrating longer than I have been canning, but for the last couple of years, two years to be exact, since 2020. I've really been focusing on canning, um, canning because I wanted to really stock the pantry uh, with meat and beans and things that our family really eats and uh, nutritious things like that. I do still dehydrate when I have time every summer when I have things coming out of the herb bed or garden. So today I'm going to talk about um, a few of the things that I love to dehydrate and a couple of things that I don't like to do as much and I will say that that may be user error because I am like I said only been doing it for a few years um, and not consistently just in the last um, couple of years have I been trying new things so let's jump in and get started um, yeah so let's start so one of the one things I talked about in my previous video about canning was potatoes I don't like to can potatoes I know many of you do and I'm, I'm excited to know that there are people that do it and enjoy it and listen um, if I had to do it I would absolutely can to feed my family potatoes but my favorite way to do it is to dehydrate and you'll notice that I'm getting lower <clears throat> on a lot of these because I haven't done it in a while. So I'm going to be doing a lot of dehydrating in the next um, few weeks and months. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that and what I do, just let me know in the comments. But potatoes, these are just like Yukon Gold potatoes. These are um, sweet potatoes. Um, I love to can those and then when you rehydrate them, you can put them in soups, you can put them in casseroles, you can actually bake them and or uh, or um, stir fry them so they hold their shape once they are reconstituted. So that's why I like to do potatoes instead of um, canning those. Um, so my main things I'm going to talk about today are veggies and then spices and herbs and a couple of oddballs that maybe nobody else will talk about but maybe they will so potatoes sweet potatoes regular potatoes another veggie i love to do is zucchini uh, a couple of things i do for zucchini i do shredded so i can toss this in um zucchini bread i can rehydrate it throw it in zucchini bread i can throw it in soups i can throw it in scrambled eggs um but i don't have any right now because we actually snack on them very often and that is sliced zucchini you guys, they are so good. When you get them, um, when I still don't like to use a really large one. So I use about medium-sized ones, and I slice them thin and dehydrate them. I've even went as far as to put salt and maybe some seasoning on them, and we can just eat them out of the jar. That's why I have none of them left. But yeah, so zucchini, even yellow squash, but zucchini is my favorite um, to do. I do okra. Um, which I like to do as well. Um, I have when these are freshly dehydrated, we can snack on them. But after they're sitting in for a while, I usually don't use them for anything but soup. You can also grind them up and make it a powder. I don't. I haven't made the powder out of the okra, so I'm not sure if it gets slimy like okra can in soups or not. But you could do that. Um, a couple other veggies that I love to jar or to dehydrate and put in jars are mushrooms. You can see. How awesome those turn out. A couple of things I like to do. Mushrooms. Omelets. These are great in omelets. Soups. Um, I do a mushroom brown rice. Um, that you could use these for. Uh, that recipe is on my blog. It's low fat. You can use um, these mushrooms. Rehydrate them in the beef stock. That you're actually going to cook your rice in. Delicious. So I'll put that down. You can also powder these for if you're making a like a cream of mushroom soup. I like to make a low carb gluten free 
um, cream of mushroom soup since I don't use those canned soups. And so these is, I use these for that. So powdered form and in these whole pieces. Yummy, 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 yummy. Um, and eggplant. Uh, you know, these look kind of rough now because this is the last jar. I'm down to the end pieces. But um, just the other day I used my dehydrated eggplant um, for a quick dinner. Now I say quick, I do start it the night before when I'm gonna use the eggplant. What I do is I take the eggplant out, lay them in a baking dish. Um, I mix a little bit of extra water in with my marinara sauce or my jarred tomato sauce. If I use my tomato sauce, I don't always use water because it's a little bit less thick than maybe some of the store-bought tomato sauce. Pour it over the top, I wrap it tightly or put the lid on my casserole dish, put it in the refrigerator, let it sit overnight, and it actually rehydrates the eggplants. I take it out, I put cheese on the top, you can put vegan cheese on the top or leave it off. Bake it and then we eat it over, um, you could eat it over, say if your family like pasta, you could eat it over pasta, you could eat it over um, cauliflower, or you could just eat it on the side out of a bowl with some more cheese put on top. But it's like an eggplant parmesan, but it's really simple version without having to fry the eggplant. But it's really good with these eggplants. So I look forward to growing more eggplants this year in the garden. And I'm gonna do rounds this time. These were the long skinny Japanese eggplants. Um, which we got by mistake, but they turned out fine. So I'm definitely going to set these on here. Definitely we'll do those as well. Another one that I like to do that I do not have on hand is celery. I'm sure a lot of people may mention celery. Um, if I keep it in the refrigerator, we don't eat it fast enough, but I do love it to have in soups. And when I make my homemade um, beef stock and chicken turkey stock, I like to have celery. So dehydrated celery is the way to go. It won't go bad on you, but you can buy it, you know, grab some if you see it or if you grow it, dehydrate it. It's amazing. You can always grind it into a powder as well. If you have people in your family that don't like the texture or the taste, you can sneak it in with um, powder. These are peppers. These are bell peppers, actually. You can see I'm getting really low, so it's really hoping to get um, gardening season coming fast. So, bell peppers. I love the taste of bell peppers. My son doesn't always like the texture. He will eat them, but sometimes he'll say, oh, I don't want onions and peppers. But if I want the flavor, I can use onion powder um, or this um, bell pepper powder in there, and he never knows that it's in there. Another item that I like to grind up into a powder is pumpkin, and then you can just rehydrate that. Um, I, Leanne at Mennonite Farmhouse gave me a great idea of how to use pumpkin powder, and that was with her pumpkin spice latte. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a drink. I'll try and link to her recipe below. Um, so pumpkin powder, and let's see, I think that's just about it for the things that we're going to show you. There are several others, like mixed vegetables. I buy frozen and dehydrate, corn, things like that are great. But I'll move on to my next category, which is herbs and spices. I love to do onions and then grind my own onion powder. I also have garlic um, over here. Um, garlic and onion powder. I do those. Actually, my dehydrator, you may hear it. It's going back there. I actually have ginger. And this is what it looks like. I keep these jars. This is ginger that I bought a while back at Walmart. And mainly I bought it just to have this jar. And this is my dehydrated ginger. So on my dehydrator back here, I have garlic, three shells, and then um, two of the ginger. So I keep all these. Um, this is dill that I dehydrated and kept from, that I grew in my garden. And you can see this is just a um, everything bagel seasoning. I will soak this and take this off and use it for my spices. So favorites are garlic, onion, um, ginger. I love to do peppermint for my tea that I'm sipping on now. It is prolific grower. So if you grow peppermint, you know that you got to keep up with it and to maintain it, you have to constantly dehydrate it. So this is just one of tons of shells of peppermint that I have back there. So this video is getting already a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but there's just so many great things that I love to jar. Oh, here's one of my oregano's. I love doing oregano. I have sage as well, but I'm going to move on and tell you about a couple of things that I did not enjoy canning and a reason why. Again, I don't have that many um, because I really haven't ran into a lot that I don't like, but I know there are a few like apples. Now, let me um, say this. I don't like doing fruit with the peeling on them. So yeah, maybe that's why I don't, if we peel them, I like the apples okay. 
um, but I don't like using it with a um, peel, so I'll use this for teas now. Um, I'll grind it up maybe or just soak it in a tea um, just so I can use those up. Um, but I don't like doing apples or pears um, with the skin or the peelings on. Another thing I do not like canning, I'm sorry, <laughs> canning, my brain is going canning, but another thing that I do not like or have not enjoyed dehydrating are bananas. So, bananas I think I was a little disappointed with at first, and I've done it many times, I've tried many different techniques, and of course if somebody gives you a 40 pound box of bananas, you got to dehydrate some or put them somewhere, but I think, you know the banana chips that you get in the stores, like in the trail mixes and things like that? Well, when I was a noob um, in dehydrating, I thought, oh, I'm going to make my own. Wah, 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 right? Because dehydrated bananas are not those bananas. So the bananas you get store-bought are freeze-dried bananas or something that they can do in mass companies. Most of the time freeze-dried. So on a regular standard um, dehydrator like my Nesco or even a Excalibur, you're not going to get that same consistency, the snap and crunch with the banana or at least I have not discovered how you can do that and I know many others haven't either because dehydrating it makes them kind of like a leathery. Now you can get them really dry. It takes a really long time to do it. But they're really chewy. And so, yeah. So, my family does not like them. Uh, but if you like doing bananas, if you found a better way so that they don't get really chewy and chewy, drop a, a link below and let me know um, how you do it. So, the apples with the peels, bananas. Oh, I did not like broccoli and cauliflower. So, I save room in my freezer to blanch and freeze my broccoli and cauliflower when I have excess or when it comes out of the garden or if I get fresh. So, I didn't like the way that it got tough and woody. Even when you rehydrate it, the stems never did really come back to a consistency that we like. They're really chewy and woody. And again, it goes back to that whole thing. I don't dehydrate things that we don't enjoy or that we won't eat because what sense does that make, right? So I freeze um, broccoli and cauliflower. I think that is it. Oh, I forgot to go back. Let me tell you back just one time. Uh, the, one of the one things I want to talk to you about um, that I like to dehydrate at my or my low carb crackers and dog treats right dog treats and not necessarily um to preserve them but i like to use my dehydrator to get some of that extra moisture out of them after you bake them and make them really crispy um i make an almond flour cracker that we love i'll put the link below and putting them on the dehydrator for several hours after they've cooled from the oven really gives them a snap and it really it makes them really enjoyable for the dog treats we make homemade dog treats and i do bake them and then I put them on the dehydrator, and that just makes them a little bit crunchy, too, so they're not, like, soft. But, yeah, so that I had to throw that little bit in. I did want to share with you a couple of things that I have learned, tips and tricks. One goes back to the bananas. Dehydrated food and freeze-dried food are not the same thing. So, if you enjoy a freeze-dried food, say, that you get from Augustine Farms or your local health food store, don't confuse that with the product that you're going to get from your dehydrator at home because they will be different. Or at least from my experience, they're way different. So don't get your hopes up there. Let's see. So use reuse things. I've learned to reuse things like the spice jars that you can buy. I'm sure you can order these um, individually that have not been used off Amazon. But, you know, if you have some old ones that seal really good, reuse those for your spices. If you like peppermint tea or herbal teas, grow your herbs and de dehydrate them at home. They make wonderful teas and they are delicious. What else? Let's me make sure. Oh, okay. So a little bit of funny tip for me. I've learned this the hard way. If you're going to dehydrate strong things like garlic or ginger, jalapenos, <laughs> jalapenos, anyway, I do like de dehydrating those things. But if you don't want your home to smell like that or you have that odor, one tip that I do is I have um, shelves in my um, in my garage, lots of plug-ins, and I set my, sorry, that is um, dog treats coming out of the oven, so let me just say this really fast. Put your dehydrator somewhere that you don't mind the smell of onions or jalapenos or garlic to be pungent because sometimes it can be. That's a tip that I learned. Hopefully it helps you just as well. 
And I'm going to sign off for now because I'm going to give you plenty of time to go see the other YouTube channels in this collaboration. So if you like what you've seen here today, please subscribe. Tell me what you like to dehydrate in the comments below. And always remember to follow me over on social media. Just search me by My Table 3. And I hope to see you there. See you guys next time on the next video.